Hey everyone, my name is Jack and I wanted to jump on here to make a video about visual snow syndrome uh, and how that you can manage your symptoms a bit better and hopefully move on with your life uh, like I have. Uh, another reason for this video is because, you know, a lot of the information that I see online is quite uh, doomsday and there isn't really much out there to provide you with some hope uh, on how you can manage the symptom. Uh, sorry, not symptoms, symptoms and the condition a bit better. And I think that I'm a good example uh, of that. So I wanted to just jump in and just start off by saying that this is purely advice only if you have received a formal diagnosis um, or you've ruled out any uh, brain lesions, uh, MS, other conditions that can cause these visual snow type related symptoms. The main symptoms that I deal with, I'll go into what I deal with and how I deal with them. And then my overall general consensus of what I think uh, visual snow syndrome truly is. Uh, so my main symptom is palinopsia. So I get stationary palinopsia, meaning I look at an object that is relatively high in contrast, look to a low contrast area, and then the exact replica of what I looked at will flash for a split second. Uh, my neurologist seems to think that this is uh, common amongst some uh, and not experienced by others. So for me, it is definitely something that I've struggled with the most <clears throat> throughout the uh, 11 years that I've uh, now had visual snow syndrome. And I really just wanted to say that this particular symptom is very much related, I think, to OCD. So I'm not disputing the fact that it's there and it happens and it's real and it's not actually OCD itself. I think that the persistence and the seriousness of this symptom, palinopsia, is very much driven by OCD because I and a lot of others tend to become obsessed with it and play with it. So what I mean by playing with these symptoms uh, is by looking at something and looking away to see if it still happens. Now that is something I've probably done a million times. I'm constantly looking at, well, was constantly looking at something, looking away to see if it happens. And that is a very, very unnatural way to look at the world and an unnatural thing to do in general. So if you find that you experience palinopsia or stationary palinopsia like I do, which is looking at something, looking away and seeing it flash again, you need to stop doing that because that is what makes it worse. You are literally wiring your brain to put that at the forefront of your mind. And that is a really, really silly, silly thing to be doing. And not only is it silly, it's a waste of your energy. I've, there's no need to be looking at something and looking away and playing with it and seeing if it happens still because you're making it worse. My next symptom is negative after images, which I get a lot from bright lights and light bulbs and flashes kind of thing. Uh, it does uh, not really debilitate me because I actually think it's a very common thing that happens in most normal people. Uh, it's quite reassuring to know that a lot of my friends experience this symptom um, and it really isn't something that I'm too concerned about. I actually don't even think it could be related to visual snow syndrome. I think they've kind of just chucked that in there because it's so common. Uh, the next one is static. Now for me, I experience very, very subtle static on most days. Uh, white walls is where I see it the most. Uh, I do see it in the dark when I'm trying to sleep. Um, I also get color swirls, etc. when I close my eyes and I'm trying to sleep. Um, and when I'm out driving my car, it's very, very, very subtle day or night. Um, I never even knew or even consciously was aware of the static until I Googled my palinopsia symptoms, um, which brought me to visual, visual snow syndrome to begin with. So I wasn't aware that I had it until I even learned that it was such a thing. And then I looked around and thought, oh, whoa, I do experience that. My next symptom that I get quite regularly is a weird pattern or a shape that's in my vision, the center of my vision that I see mainly in the dark. I call it a diamond or a flower um, because it has a weird shape. It's kind of like a ball of static, if anything, but it's shaped into a small geometric kind of pattern. It's very, very subtle. It's transparent. I can't really explain it. It's only there in the dark, um, 
but I, I really, I'm not too concerned about it. Bluefield and Top Deck for Manon, for Manon I can't say it. Uh, another symptom that I get, uh, I can look at this, if I look at the sky, a blue, a blue sky for, you know, more than 10, 30 seconds, I start to see that it pulsates like this uh, in the center of my vision and I will see squiggly lines and uh, floaters will go crazy. Which brings me to my next symptom, which is, yeah, floaters. I do experience them. They remind me a lot of bubbles. Uh, clear, transparent little bubbles. Um, if you're a spiritual person, they look like orbs or uh, whatever shows up in photos when you take a photo of a dark room um, where there's a lot of dust particles um, or as if you're a spiritual person, you call them ghosts. <laughs> um, they are very, very annoying. Uh, I get rid of those by just twirling my eyes around like this and then they disappear. Uh, it's quite odd. But yeah, that were, those are my symptoms and that is what I've dealt with for the past 11 years. Now, I will very quickly say that even I've dealt with them for the past 11 years, I've not worried about them for 11 years. Now, I only worried about this after the symptoms started when I was 14, uh, which I originally panicked about um, because I thought they were strange and I wasn't sure if they were already there and I just noticed them. I was very confused. I did a lot of research uh, on it and came to the conclusion that I was normal. With that mindset of, I'm normal. I lived 10 years without ever, ever, ever concerning me. I never noticed the symptoms, particularly palinopsia, which is the one that gets me the most. I never noticed squiggly lines or the pulsating in the sky, uh, unless it was a very rare occasion. Now, this brings me to the point of this video. I, for the past, sorry, two years ago, I decided to randomly Google my palinopsia symptoms. And that was probably the worst decision that I've ever made because it led me to visual snow syndrome and educating, being educated on what the condition is. I was able to relate to so many of the symptoms that I panicked and just obsessed over it. I was looking for after images. I was looking for static. I was looking for you know, blue field and toptic phenomenon. I was looking for color swirls when I closed my eyes. I was looking for everything. And the symptoms got so bad that I was depressed. I would drink alcohol. I would consider suicide. It really ruined my life um, for a while. And I, you know, had all the tests done on my eyes. I went to, you know, um, all the visual snow researchers and had MRIs done and I did absolutely everything to rule out anything wrong in my brain. And it still wasn't enough for me to accept and to just move on. I not prayed, but I hoped and, you know, maybe it prayed a little bit uh, that I would just go back to how I was before I ever knew this condition existed. But it felt like I could never unsee the symptoms again because I was so aware of them and I trained my brain so much to the point where I felt that I permanently wired my brain to consciously, unconsciously be aware of these symptoms and to be on the lookout for them, um, which was really not a good thing to do, um, which is why I think that this condition is strongly linked with OCD and anxiety. Um, yeah, it is, in my particular circumstance, strongly linked with OCD and anxiety because the obsession was purely because I learned that it wasn't normal. Beforehand, for the past nine, 10 years, I always had OCD symptoms. It's something I've always kind of secretly dealt with, but never really, you know, had to the extent of, um, not had, never really, I don't even know where I'm going with it. You get the point. <laughs> the past yeah, two years has been really tough for me. Um, but then one day I woke up and I literally told myself enough is enough. This is very unnatural. I started to think about what I was like before I knew of the condition and how I saw the world. And then I realized that beforehand, I wasn't looking up at the sky, looking for symptoms of floaters and a pulsating sky. Uh, I wasn't looking at objects and then looking away to see if I had palinopsia. I wasn't looking at white walls or consciously aware of the dark darkness of my room and looking for static. And I realized that what I was doing was unnatural in the sense of I was caught up in this world, 
that I had created and a lot of you guys have created for yourself as well. Once I kind of woke up to that and understood this is actually me driving this condition, I snapped out of it and really my perception of the symptoms changed. I more didn't see them as something to be fearful of. I more saw them as something that was ridiculous because I felt that I had created it. Uh, not created it, but agitated to the point where it made it debilitating. Uh, so what I started doing firstly was um, I had to train myself very rigorously for a few weeks because it became really bad, almost like a tick. Uh, whenever I'd look at a face, I'd look away while talking to them because, you know, sometimes when you're talking to someone, you maintain eye contact, but you look away just to break eye contact for a second. I started purposely not looking at a white wall um, or anticipating an after image. I started to just forget about it as much as I could. And I know that sounds easier said than done, but it takes practice and it takes a little while to get used to. Uh, with the floaters and blue field and toptic phenomenon, I stopped looking at the sky altogether. I just avoided it because it's really unnatural to constantly be looking up there unless there's a plane or a bird or a beautiful sunset. Um, so I literally just stopped caring about a lot of the symptoms. And again, I know that sounds easier said than done, but for someone who lived so poorly for a good year or two, um, worrying and obsessing over the condition, I had to rewire my brain in a reaction to the symptoms um, that I was having. So essentially what I'm trying to say is um, a lot of what I'm reading online and a lot of the stories that I, I read from people on Reddit and Google, um, Facebook groups, is that they're kind of still stuck in that place that I was stuck in. And that is a search for a cure, a search for answers, a search for how to stop it. And that is an obsession. And that is a classic OCD symptom. You might not be someone that associates with a mental illness such as OCD uh, or anxiety, but I can assure you that healthy people get obsessions as well. And it might not be obsessive compulsive disorder, but if something persists for so long, we're obsessed with something for so long, unfortunately, it is OCD. If it's longer than three months, it's OCD. I can't be any more blunt about it. So essentially, if you want to overcome this condition, you need to really change your perception of it and understand and accept you're fueling it yourself and you're agitating the symptoms and training your brain to constantly be on the lookout and be aware of them because you've associated it with danger. Now, I know a lot about anxiety and the amygdala, which is what causes a lot of our anxiety. And our amygdala remembers a lot more than what we can in our conscious mind. So a classic example is someone, you know, was in a war 10 years ago and they got out of the war and then they started having showers at their new girlfriend's house and they started having panic attacks in their shower. They had no reason to believe they should have an anxiety attack in the shower. They couldn't figure it out. They ended up going to see a counsellor and it ended up being discovered that his new girlfriend had a particular scent in his shower and the shampoo he was using, that was the same scent of a shampoo he was using back in the war. So when he smelt that, he didn't consciously remember that smell, but his amygdala remembered it. And his amygdala set off an anxiety attack. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're rewiring your brain to constantly be fixated with these symptoms, your brain is going to constantly panic and send signals to your amygdala saying, this isn't normal. Let's keep this at the forefront of our mind. Let's make sure that we highlight these symptoms. Let's ignore all the other things happening in our vision and focus on this. And that is so unhealthy for you. And unhealthy, it was un unhealthy for me. I can safely say now that it's been, you know, a good seven months where I've consistently not cared about this condition anymore that my symptoms have diminished by 80%. I do not see any floaters at all anymore because I don't look at the sky. If I look at the sky for five minutes right now, I'll start seeing floaters and I'll start seeing that sky go pulsate and I'll start seeing you know, swiggly lines everywhere, which are quite common in himself anyway. Or if I look at something right now and look away, it, the image will, will persist, I'll get palinopsia. Um, but I don't care. I don't care to keep doing it anymore. I don't care to be fixated on it and looking for answers on how to fix it. It's all a state of mind. I've learned this condition. And trust me, I've had this for so many years and I'm living proof that back in the day when I first started noticing these symptoms and I thought it was normal, 
I lived my life normal. The reason you're so worried is because you know it's not normal. And now you're obsessed with it and you want to fix yourself, which is fine. You can do that. But that is a waste of your energy and that's not going to get rid of this syndrome for you. If you guys had any questions, um, please let me know. I'm going to be talking to anyone that comments uh, below. I'm more than happy to make any other videos talking about any of my particular experiences uh, with this condition. Uh, I know that my opinion is definitely controversial. It definitely is on Reddit. A lot of people uh, think I'm trolling uh, with my opinion. Um, but I, I consider myself to be a very informed person. You know, I, I'm very much educated. I've done so much research and this is the best cure that I have and that you can have as well. Bye. Thank you again uh, for watching that. And if you made it through, I really would appreciate if you just commented and let me know what your thoughts are on that. Um, I know that, you know, you guys um, are struggling, but it's okay. Stress less. Who cares? Move on with your life. It's going to be okay.